Photoshop's Spin Blur filter is a fun tool for creating a circular spin effect. And it includes an option for a strobe effect, which can imitate what's possible in a camera or go in completely new creative directions. Let's take a look. Before I apply the filter, I'll choose Filter, Convert for Smart Filters in order to turn this layer or background into a smart object. Then I'll choose Filter, Blur Gallery, Spin Blur. By default, Photoshop puts an ellipse right in the middle of the image. I can reposition it by clicking on the pin and dragging it. I can change the blur amount by using the dial to increase or decrease the blur, or I can use the blur angle slider over in the blur tools area. In order to make the ellipse larger, I can click on the white line and drag outwards. In order to change the distance of the blur fade, I can click on any of the larger white dots and drag them in. Now we see there's a larger fade distance between the area that's spinning and being blurred at 100% and that that's not. Or we can drag them out in order to reduce that area. Now in order to reposition this, I'm going to eliminate the blur temporarily by just dragging it to zero degrees. Since only this fan area here actually moves, I will reposition it as well as resize it. I'll go ahead and move it and then drag out and again reposition. It might need to be a little bit bigger, so I'll just drag that out a little bit more and move the circle a little bit higher. Now, when you have an image like this where you're not photographing the object straight on, the middle of the circle or the spin might not be in alignment with your photograph. When this happens, hold down the Option key, click in the pin, and now you can see I can reposition that center point. So I'll position it right there, and then we can add a little bit of spin using the dial. In fact, I'm going to add quite a bit of spin so that we can take a look at these motion effects. We have three options, a strobe strength, strobe flashes, and the strobe flash duration. So the strobe strength would be how bright the strobe would be, how bright the flash would be. And this is going to enable us to freeze part of our image or freeze part of the motion. So we can bring that all the way up to 100% for now just to see the effect. Then you can determine how many strobe flashes there are. If I move this down to two, we get a very different effect than if I move it up to say something like 17. I'll go ahead and decrease that for now. And we have the strobe flash duration. If I scoot this over to the right, you can see that it gets a little bit blurrier because the strobe would be flashing for a longer time. In this case, it's measured in degrees, but because it's on for longer, we're actually getting a shift within those degrees. So it's up to you whether or not you want to add any motion effects. For now, I'll go ahead and turn these off, including the strobe strength, and then I'll decrease the blur angle a bit maybe down to say 13%. As soon as I'm satisfied with this, I'll go ahead and click OK. Now some of you might be wondering why I'm not bothered by the fact that this whole area is also being blurred. Well, because I converted the background into a smart object and then added the blur gallery as a smart filter, I can always use the smart filter mask to remove the blur wherever I don't want it. So let's toggle the blur gallery off for a moment by clicking on the eye icon. That just enables me to look at the engine without the blur on top of it. So now I can select my elliptical marquee tool and then click and drag out a selection. And I'm trying to select the top of the area here because I want to hide the blur outside of that area. Since I didn't quite drag out the correct size elliptical marquee, I'll choose select and then transform selection. I'll click OK. And now I can reposition this and I can resize it in order to make it fit. And I really only need to worry about this area up in here. So I'll use my arrow keys and move that down and to the right. As soon as I've got it in position, I'll click the check mark. And now I want to fill the mask with black, but not in this area in the outside area, so I'll choose Select, Inverse, and then making sure that the mask is selected for the smart filters. I want to fill with the foreground color, which is black, so I'll use the keyboard shortcut, Option Delete. 
Then I'll deselect using Command D, and we can see before and after if I toggle the blur gallery off. There it is before and with the blur gallery applied. If I need to feather those edges and soften them a bit, I can click on the Properties panel and move the feather slider over to the right, close the Properties panel, and there you go, how to create a realistic and creative circular spin effect in Photoshop.